San Antonio starts right now. This morning, a three alarm fire at a San Antonio apartment complex last night ends with two people in critical condition and many others rescued. We had multiple rescues. When I say multiple, probably up to 15 to 20, where we put ladders up and took people off the balconies of these buildings. You see ladders all over this building. So our firefighters came in here tonight, put those ladders up, went up and made a lot of rescue. So very proud of the work that they did. This morning, what investigators are saying about a cause so far. And after 16 losses, your San Antonio Spurs are back in the win column this morning. We're going to have some of the highlights of their win against the Jazz. That's coming up. Fantastic news. And outside with live cam, it is very, very muggy out there this morning. I actually saw a little mist on my windshield far north side very early this morning. I'll talk to Mike about your forecast. Good morning, everybody. We jump right into midweek Wednesday morning. And it's March 1st. That's right. Happy March 1st. Happy Wednesday, but a little humid out there. Not too springy yet. As, well, I'll tell you what, Mike Oster Hage, what's yes. your forecast looking like for today? And I'm worried about our fire danger still, even though it, it's muggy. It, it, that's going to be the situation tomorrow night and Friday. And actually, the fire weather watch has been expanded a little bit. Uh, we'll talk about that coming up in a couple of minutes. First things first, though, yeah, warm, humid uh, <laughs> temperature right now is actually at the normal high or actually above that a little bit. I'm going to show you that in a second. We do have a little bit of fog. Kerrville, Hondo, uh, hints of it here and there. We're going to have to watch out as the morning rolls on for more of this fog to develop. You can see it's just sort of scattered about the area, not anything real thick as of yet. We also have, other than the little bit of mist, like Mark was just talking about, a couple of uh, sprinkly showers out there that are showing up on radar right now. Some of this may be evaporating before it reaches the ground, but there are obviously places where the showers are actually coming on down and it's more than just that little bit of light mist right here just about to cross over 35 so extending from almost a Catula, Dilly, Pearsall, Divine up in toward Hondo sliding to the east a little bit to northeastwardly and this is going to be the situation throughout the rest of the morning there's these temperatures again normal high is 70 we're at 71 normal lows in the mid upper 40s so do the math yeah 25 degrees approximately above normal and of course a ton of humidity out there with these dew points well up into the uh, 60s as of right now. Bunch of allergens on top of that. The update account, of course, comes out later on this morning. No jacket this morning, uh, except for perhaps a little bit of a light rain jacket, just because of those few little sprinkles that missed out there. Some patches of fog. Roads may be damp in spots. And then 90 for a high temperature today. Partly cloudy skies and again, very, very humid. Tomorrow, same situation, starting off in the morning and the afternoon. Then that big front moves on through here, and that's going to cause a couple of uh, concerns as on top of that high fire danger. We'll talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Mike, thank you. This morning, two people are in critical condition and multiple people are recovering from smoke inhalation after being rescued from their balconies during a fire at an apartment complex north of downtown. That's according to San Antonio Fire Department Chief Charles Hood. The call was reported in the 900 block of Wiesach at the Blanco Apartments last night. Hood says the fire started on a unit on a third floor. He says the cause is unknown so far. However, investigators are still looking into it. That fire produced a lot of smoke to fill the building, forcing tenants to their balconies. As you can imagine, you're taking elderly folks down a ladder or they're being startled. We do have concerns for some of them, so we're continually evaluating them at this time. Chief says crews used a ladder to rescue a 98 year old woman along with 15 to 20 people on the second, third and fourth floors. A third alarm was called just in case there was a need for more staff. SAFD has worked all night to clear every room for carbon monoxide and now they're working with the San Antonio Housing Authority or Saha to find somewhere for those affected to stay. Police are still looking for the people involved in what they believe was a home invasion. No arrests have been made so far. They say a man was shot twice in the chest at an apartment complex off of Jones Maltzberger Road. He was taken to the hospital and he is said to be okay. Police also have a, a bag a witness said was dropped by the suspects on their way out. The officer we spoke with says it appeared to have drugs inside the bag. 
Now to a train disaster in Europe. Dozens of people have been killed. Two trains collided north of Athens, Greece, igniting a massive fire. One of the trains was packed with hundreds of passengers. At least 32 people are confirmed dead, more than 80 injured. ABC's Lionel Moyes has been following the rescue efforts. This morning, the death toll rising after a passenger train collided with an oncoming freight train in northern Greece. Emergency crews arriving to find debris scattered everywhere, train cars toppled over and derailed, a mangled mess of metal, some parts unrecognizable. Officials say at one point more than 150 firefighters and 40 ambulances responded, nearby towns assisting. Hellenic Train Company says about 350 people were aboard the passenger train that departed from Athens, adding firefighters and Hellenic train personnel rushed to the scene, participating in rescue operations and providing assistance. Dozens of victims were taken to hospitals, some with serious injuries, but officials say the severity of the collision has made it extremely difficult to free people trapped. Cranes were brought in to help move the wreckage. Many of the passengers on the train were college students returning from a long weekend. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. The U.S. Supreme Court's conservative majority so far seems uh, deeply skeptical of the legality of President Biden's plan to forgive $400 billion in federal student loans. Oral arguments in a pair of the cases challenging the Biden plan stretch well past their scheduled two hours yesterday. The justices wrestled with the key questions of legal standing and legal authority under a 2003 education law. The court's conservative justices seem more concerned about the scope and scale of the administration's action, which was not specifically authorized by Congress. The three liberal justices relentlessly zeroed in on the legal standing of six GOP-led states suing the administration, suggesting none would suffer direct harm from federal loan cancellation and therefore have little grounds to sue. In a rare show of bipartisanship, the House Select Committee on China says it's focused on Beijing and the potential dangers it can bring upon the U.S. Several high-profile witnesses testified yesterday, including former National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster, separate from the hearing. Lawmakers have another concern, China's relationship with Russia. U.S. officials have given China fair warning, saying there will be consequences if it aids Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The relationship between the U.S. and China gained attention in early February when President Joe Biden ordered a suspected Chinese surveillance balloon to be shot down. China denied the craft was used for spying, saying it was a research airship that lost its course. 437, 71 degrees. And can you believe it? Your San Antonio Spurs are back in the win column. Highlights coming up next. I got, I got to say, during the 9 o'clock newscast yesterday, yeah. we were praying and hoping yes. that this would break that streak. That I'm it, glad. That they would go winless on the road. But yeah. they got the W, that's for sure. That's great. Well, more coming up. Right now, we're looking at 35 in Alamo. I believe this is the area we had an accident earlier. And now the flares have even gone out completely clear. Good news there. Looking out there with live cam, a humid start to your day, 71 degrees and temperatures will go up. We'll be right back. Spurs played at the Jazz last night to finish the nine game rodeo road trip this year. First quarter, Blake Wesley steals the ball and races back for a reverse layup to avoid the defender in the Spurs trail 19-18. But they led 32-30 after one. Second quarter, McDermott breaks off the seven-footer for a nine-point lead. 45-36, largest lead of the half. San Antonio led at halftime. Third quarter, now Jazz playing well. Taylor Horton Tucker sees a clear path to the basket off the screen. Goes slam dunk. Utah leads 61-56. Jeremy Sohan spins. And hits the jumper and Spurs trails 73-71 after three. Fourth quarter, McDermott hits a corner three. In the end, Keldon Johnson recorded 25 points, four rebounds, three assists for the Spurs, while Jeremy Sohan added 13 points, six rebounds, and six assists. That helped the Spurs defeat the Jazz and close the game on a 10-1 run. Final score, 102-94. Way to go, guys. So finally, the Spurs' 16-game losing streak comes to an end. Spurs improved to 15-47 and on the season. Well, the Spurs next come back home to host the Pacers tomorrow night at 7.30. The gym at Canyon High School packed last night for the Battle of the Rattlers. San Marcos playing Reagan in the third round of UIL Class 6A playoffs. Third quarter, San Marcos pulling away. Caden Gums finds Malik Presley for the alley-oop. 
and a 38 30 lead. Reagan rallies late in the frame. Senior Luke Price knocks down a three, capping a 5 0 run. Reagan heads into the fourth trailing. That's when San Marcos pours it on. Gum hits a long two for the 10 point lead. Then Javen Kofer finds Mateus Perkins for a triple, part of a 9 0 run to start the final quarter. San Marcos heading to the regional semifinals with a 62 46 victory over Reagan. You know, we're just all, we're, we're one team. We're all real connected. You know, it was one guy hooping. The next guy's going to hoop in. His next man up. We're all pulling for each other. We all had our eyes on the prize. We stayed together and finished. San Marcos will face Warren in the regional semis Friday night. On the other side, Class X A, 6A bracket. Brennan facing Taft. Northside Sports Gym Lakes second quarter. Bears pushing the pace. Kingston Fleming drives straight to the basket. 23-19 Brennan. Taft takes control. Demetrius Mims gets the floater off the glass. Raiders go up by three, but the Bears are too good. Off the miss, Isaiah Ward is there for the putback. Brennan advances to the regional semifinals with a 73 52 victory and that's a look at morning sports well done spurs yes excited about that we were we were hoping we really really were yeah. time now 443 and 71 degrees for now coming up next another near miss on the runway we're going to have your first look at an incident where two planes nearly collided on the runway in boston Welcome back. It is 446. Two planes nearly collided on a runway at Logan Airport in Boston after one plane took off without permission. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, another near miss on the runway. According to the FAA, air traffic control telling a Learjet pilot to wait before taking off because a JetBlue plane was landing on an intersecting runway. Land four right, Jeff Blue, two zero six. But even after acknowledging the message, the FAA says the Learjet pilot took off anyway, forcing the JetBlue plane to go from eighty-seven feet to thirty-nine hundred, and then hitting the ground, and then going back up within seconds. Like you definitely got a jolt, and then nobody knew what was going on. The JetBlue flight landing safely, but it's one of at least five close calls in recent months that ABC News has learned of. The FAA facing questions about airline safety after incidents like these. And coming up at 7 a.m., aviation expert Steve Ganyard weighs in live. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Let's look at the Rose with Trans Guide. Earlier we had a minor accident, but it seems to have cleared up, and now things are looking pretty good there at I-35 at Alamo. Looking for another beautiful pre-spring day here in South Texas? Yeah. Well, actually, it is the first day of meteorological spring. Well, there oh, you go. Okay. Divided up in the, the three-month chunks right there. So uh -huh. March, April, May is meteorological spring. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's going to feel like meteorological and everybody else's summer today, basically. Oh. So uh, we had a lot of clouds hanging around here yesterday in the morning, and that kept us from getting as warm as what we were expecting. Made it up to 84, 87 was forecast, but it's still going very hot later on today. And there you can see when those clouds finally broke up in the evening and yeah, just sitting there watching the Lord's handiwork. Love that. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. Absolutely beautiful. So plenty of clouds out there and I can't tell if there is if it looks damp on 410 over there by the airport, there may be a little bit of mist out there. Uh, Mark said he saw a little bit of mist on the windshield coming into work, and we do have a couple little sprinkly showers. This is just some uh, kind of clutter around the radar site, but here comes some of these uh, showers. Some may be evaporating before they reach the ground, but then others are definitely heavy enough, if you will, and there's enough humidity out there to allow these to come all the way down in. So this one, as uh, you can see, they're kind of dying on out, this line, if you will, that's just about crossing 35. A couple of them around Hondo right there, and then Divine, Pearsall, Dilly, not anything of any uh, consequence at all, but again, a couple little sprinkles, some mist this morning, as well as a patch or two of fog, nothing too thick yet, but Again, just be on the lookout because it always gets thicker as we approach uh, sunrise and just about everywhere there's hints of fog this morning because of that very warm, humid air out there. Humidity is really, really high. I mean, it does feel like a summer morning. We are in the low 70s right now. I'm going to stay steady. 10% chance for sprinkle some mist out there, a couple of patches of fog, and then we'll make it up into the low 80s already by noon with more sunshine out there going for 90 again today. Southerly wind not overly breezy today. We're going to do tomorrow 
just about exactly like today. Clouds, uh, mist, a little fog in the morning, very warm, very humid. As you can see, the humidity just continues to get pumped on in here. And as that does that in the morning hours, then you see some of that mist and a little bit of that fog. Then we go into the afternoon and watch out there to the west. There's that dry air coming on in here, that front that's going to move through right around dinner time tomorrow. And boy, the humidity drops like a rock, especially out in portions of the hill country. As the front moves on through, you've got a classic situation of two conflicting air masses. And so this thing is going to potentially touch off. We'll have a couple of sprinkles tomorrow morning, but a few uh, showers and thunderstorms late in the afternoon as it works on through here. And then this would continue off to the east. Now there is the chance for some of those to become potentially severe. And actually storm prediction center has moved the isolated uh, area for any stronger storms kind of expanded it back to the west a little bit more, but the best area to see anything is going to be much further off to the east. And then, of course, we also have the fire weather watch, which has now been expanded to include Bear County. And this is going to be tomorrow from noon up until three o'clock in the morning on Friday. Very, very windy conditions. We are looking at gusts about 45 to 50 miles per hour. So forecast today, Hot and humid, 83, most of the cloudy skies still. Some fog around this morning, a little bit of mist, 90, very warm and humid this afternoon. We start off tomorrow the very same way. Then the front starts to work through. A few showers and storms are going to be developing, and that's going to be later on in dinner time, early evening. Once the front comes through, very windy conditions, and that'll be the situation overnight into early Friday. Then beautiful weather starting off into the weekend, but the humidity comes right back here to start off next week. So tomorrow's going to be an interesting day in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it will be. Chance of rain, chance of storms, big wind. Well, be prepared for that. Yeah. Thank you, Mike. 451, 71 degrees. And this is the way The Mandalorian Season 3 debuts today on Disney+, Plus, but it's just the beginning of a whole bunch of new Star Wars shows we're going to explain next. Let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, three, four, six, fireball four, daily four, seven, four, five, six, fireball six. Cash five, three, five, nine, 28, 34. And your mega millions, 14, 16, 40, 52, 59, mega ball 13, mega plier two. Good luck. This is the way. After three years, the third season of The Mandalorian finally debuts on Disney+. Plus. Early is what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Hang on, kid. It's time for more Mandalorian. The hit Disney Plus series, The Mandalorian, returns today for the start of season three. And show writer slash executive producer John Favreau says it's crazy to think about where they started just a few years ago and where they are now. Started off like this, <laughs> and it gets bigger and bigger because now we have Ahsoka coming. Very big now, yeah. And Skeleton Crew, we yeah. have Book of Boba Fett. So we have four shows that are all taking place at the same time period, yeah. and they all have to... They all have to be consistent with one another. New episodes of The Mandalorian will hit Disney Plus Weekly. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. It is a part of our faith to forgive. We have always forgiven those who have wronged us. Why not now? Because now we know better. We will be excommunicated, forced to leave the colony in disgrace if we do not forgive these men. What was the hardest part about getting the film Women Talking into the Oscars conversation? Talking people into seeing it, says Sarah Pauly, director of the film, which is up for Best Adapted Screenplay and Best Picture. I think that um, people hear the title Women Talking differently than they hear a title like 12 Angry Men. And for some reason, the very act of women talking sounds offensive to some people. So I think just getting people to watch it, I think, you know, is the biggest challenge. But the film is ultimately for everybody. We'll see if Women Talking can score some Oscars gold live March 12th on ABC. And Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o has a birthday today. She's 40. You're the reason I believe in love. While music superstar Justin Bieber is 29. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathans and ABC News, Los Angeles. 456, 71 degrees. Supreme Court's conservative majority might be skeptical of the legality of President Biden's plan to forgive $400 billion in federal student loans just ahead where the case goes from here and when borrowers will have starting to pay back their loans again. Nearly 70 bullet casings found following a deadly drive-by shooting just east of downtown San Antonio. We hear from a woman who had to take cover with her child during the shootout. And let's look at the roads with Transguide. Ah, Stephen just pulled up this over here. We see flashing lights at Loop 410 at Starcrest. We're gonna be talking to him about this scene in just a minute. 
Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Very heavy smoke conditions, so what that did was force those people out to the balconies so they could get fresh air. They could not go down the hallways to the exits. A significant fire at an apartment complex forces many elderly residents to escape via ladder late last night here in San Antonio. Just ahead, an update on at least two people who are in critical condition this morning. After a lengthy hearing on President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, signals that the conservative majority and the Supreme Court may be leaning one way. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details coming up. And here at home, let's look out there with live cam. Humid, 71 degrees. You probably will not need a sweater, jacket, anything this morning. And good morning to you, everybody. We've made it to Wednesday, new month. It's March 1st. Yes, happy March. And we're already with the warm weather for the spring-like conditions, I guess. Yeah, Mike said he just mentioned everybody here in the studio, a few spring-like showers out there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not much. Don't get really excited about this. This is just kind of that, uh, that little bit of nuisance rain, some sprinkles. A few showers are showing up on already. I'm going to show you that in a second. Just enough to basically make the roads damp. Uh, seven two degrees right now and that bottom number is just sky high. We need a dew point up there in the mid and leaning toward the upper 60s. You definitely feel all the humidity and it will greet you as you step out the door this morning. It's going to be a hot one today. Upper 80s, low 90s all around the area, especially along the Rio Grande Valley. The aquifer yesterday's reading, it did drop down half a foot and the allergens once again, as we are now approaching spring and actually the start of meteorological spring on the 1st of March, just a whole bunch of stuff out there from all the trees that are now blooming. So here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And again, we've got just a few of these uh, light little showers around the area. Uh, not much, but again, just enough to uh, to kind of make things a little bit a uh, little bit slippery in spots. And then there is also a lot which is too light to be picked up on radar, but it's uh, you know, you, you kind of squint and you uh, you miss it just a little bit, but especially some of these showers right here down around uh, Katula. Dilly, and then these uh, kind of go up 35, just a little bit more. And then here in town, we've got some of these and, and a couple of them that are mixed in with some of the ground clutter right here. This uh, kind of greenish, you can see how that doesn't move, but zooming in a little bit more and you can see some of these little showers that are now working their way right in here. A few around, uh, say, Leon Valley over there on 410 on the west side coming across 90. So you're going to run into a few of those sprinkles and even a couple of them further up to the north. Again, this stuff that doesn't move is not rain, but here we have a few of these showers that just move through right around uh, Balverde. Also, a little bit of fog out there, a little bit of reduced visibility, not as bad as yesterday in spots, but just be on the lookout over the next couple of hours. And this is pretty much widespread around here. And as far as this morning, patchy fog, a couple of sprinkles, a little shower here and they're very, very warm, very, very humid, of course, hot and humid later on today, getting up to 90. And then tomorrow we're going to start off the same way. Mist, drizzle, a little bit of fog, very hot. That front comes through in the afternoon. It's going to touch <coughs> off a few showers and storms, mainly to these. Some of those could be on the strong to severe side. Very, very windy conditions. That's going to be the situation overnight into early Friday. Then a couple of days are going to be absolutely beautiful. Details on that and all of the advisories and watches out there as that front moves through. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Anything going on yet? Uh, we did have a few issues out there early in the morning, Mike. Good morning. And as we get the morning commute going, let's take a quick look around town to show you what you can expect this uh, Wednesday. The I-10 at Frio, not a bad shot there. Really just light traffic this early in the morning. But keep in mind, uh, we did have an issue along 35 at Alamo. That was a minor crash that was reported. Thankfully, it looks like that cleared out rather quickly. And you can see now 37 at Fair Avenue. Not a bad shot at all. As we get you to the map, really what we're going to see right now is a lot of green on the screen and you know active construction and in fact some of that construction still taking place along Loop 410 over on the northeast side of San Antonio. We'll get to that information a little bit later on, but if you plan on getting over here to San Antonio, let's take a look at those travel times. That journey from Bernie along I-10 eastbound should be about 25 minutes at this hour. 27 minutes if you're traveling along 281 southbound, so no need to hurry if you're coming in from Bolverde and about 25 minutes, not too awful, from New Braunfels along I-35 southbound. But let's get it back here in town. We're going to keep it close on the roadways throughout the morning. There's 90 at 35, 410 at Starcrest. Now, a little bit more research does show that that is actually construction taking place. So we'll keep a close eye on that and have updates on what you can expect coming up a little bit later on. Mark.
Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news. Gunshots fired in a west side neighborhood have sent two men to the hospital. Police say it happened when a middle of the night gathering suddenly went south. Channel Weber is live in the 100 block of North San Ignacio near West Commerce. Katrina, what happened? Well, good morning. Uh, exactly uh, what Mark said. Police say that uh, four men had gathered out here and one of them got upset and pulled out a gun. Now, uh, he ended up shooting two of the others there in the hospital. Police are here in this neighborhood still investigating. They've been going around taking pictures, collecting evidence. They say that the men were right there in the driveway in front of a vacant house. They had some sort of a gathering and it became an argument with one of the men again pulling a gun, shooting at the others, wounding two of them. Police tell us that the two who were taken to the hospital are in critical condition. They are still looking for the shooter who they say took, in, took off in either a tan or a brown SUV. But for now, they are still here in this neighborhood just trying to find out whatever they can about exactly what happened. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Happening overnight, San Antonio firefighters rescued dozens of people from an apartment complex just north of downtown. Alyssa Cole joins us live from Wesatch and Blanco Road. And Alyssa, we know crews worked late overnight. How does it look out there now? Yes, good morning, Marks. Stephanie, right now I am outside of Saha, that San Antonio Housing Authority, and we know this particular Housing Authority apartment building is for seniors, and I did just step in a few moments ago, and you can see staff, they have the uh, different very large fans placed throughout the hallways, of course, trying to clear out um, any leftover smoke or any heavy um, any heavy substance there in the atmosphere. Staff is also here as well, and firefighter, um, excuse me, security and police and staff, they're all working together to make sure that this area remains safe. Now, here's what we know. The fire started at around 11 o'clock last night. Fire officials say it started in an apartment unit on the third floor, and while investigators don't know how the fire started, they say it did cause heavy, thick smoke to fill the building. All of the floors, second, third, and four, four, four were charged with smoke. Uh, very heavy smoke conditions, so what that did was force those people out to the balconies so they could get fresh air. They could not go down the hallways to the exits. He also explained that, you know, throughout the night, they had to make several rescues. One of those rescues was a 98 year old woman, and they also had to make 15 to 20 more rescues on the second, third and fourth floor. And that even pushed them to make a third alarm call just in case they need more crews to help make more rescues. Now, we do know two people were taken to the hospital. We will have an update on their conditions a little later, but we do know throughout the night, firefighters cleared the different apartment units for carbon monoxide, making sure those people stay safe. But as of now, we don't see any firefighters here, so it looks like everything is just fine. We'll get a chance to talk to staff a little later today. But for now, reporting downtown, Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Nearly 70 bullet casings scattered all over the road. Still no sign of suspects who fired them. San Antonio police say this is all due to a deadly drive by near North Walters and Burnett. That's just east of downtown. The targets were two men in their 30s. SAPD says one man died, the others in the hospital. Police say they don't know what the motive might have been, but it's clear that it was a targeted shooting. They say the two men were standing in front of a food mart when suspects in a white sedan pulled up and started shooting. One nearby resident who asked to stay anonymous said a bullet hit her truck. That's when she and her child took cover. No, you can't have them be outside playing and you just always have to be a lookout. And once you hear something, you have to have that natural instinct to grab them. It's too close to home. It was literally so close that our living room walls were shaking. We asked SAPD Chief William McManus about the shootings in the area. He's not sure any neighborhood is immune to the rise in crime, but he says risky behavior is usually to blame. On the national news this morning, the conservative justices on the United States Supreme Court appear skeptical of President Biden's plan to forgive millions of dollars in federal student loans. As ABC's Faith Abube reports, millions of Americans eligible for the debt cancellation will have to wait until this summer to find out whether the Supreme Court will allow the program to move forward.
squarely in the hands of the Supreme Court. For more than three hours Tuesday, the conservative justices casting doubt on whether President Biden has the legal authority to wipe nearly half a trillion dollars in federal student loans with just a stroke of his pen. I think most casual observers would say if you're going to give up that much amount of money, if you're going to affect the obligations of that many Americans on a subject that's of great controversy, they would think that's something for Congress to act on. Critics calling the plan a scam, an unfair giveaway that would overlook some Americans like those who already paid back their loans. And there are the indirect costs, like the fact that the present student loan giveaway is likely to prolong our current inflation crisis. According to the White House, 26 million people already applied for relief and 16 million were approved before the two legal challenges halted the program. You go to school to get a well-paying job, but you're also digging yourself a hole of enormous debt and it's hard to crawl out of. Justice Amy Coney Barrett and the three liberal justices zeroing in on the legal standing of six GOP-led states suing the Biden administration, suggesting none would suffer direct harm. Usually we don't allow one person to step into another's shoes and say, I think that that person suffered a harm, even if the harm is very great. Protesters gathered outside the court as the conservative majority now appears poised to crush the loan forgiveness plan. And White House sources tell ABC News that they are confident they can win this case. A decision is expected by the end of June, and right now the White House insists there is no plan B if they were to lose this case. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 511, 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Dish Network is revealing more about a cyber security incident that caused a major outage for customers. Next, we take a look at what is next for a San Antonio pedestrian bridge destroyed when a truck crashed into it just last week. And let's look out there with live cam. March 1st, and we're starting off humid, but prepare for some crazy weather tomorrow. We'll check in with Mike later on. We are learning more about the city's plans to rebuild the pedestrian bridge over on Castroville Road. Last week, a truck crashed into that bridge and then it collapsed. Well, the city's public works department says it is working on its schedule for design and construction for the new bridge within the next few weeks. And right now it's setting up a temporary pedestrian crossing at Castroville Road and Dahl Green Avenue, and that should be up by the middle of the month. Your electricity bills are going up. CPS Energy last raised its rates last March. That's when the utility raised the base rate by just under 4%. At the same time, the utility also increased the fuel adjustment charge to recover costs from the 2021 February freeze. But even a year ago, the plan had been to continue rate hikes in 2024 and 2026. The placeholder figure officials used at the time for the planned increases was 5.5%. We are expecting prices to increase next year. We just don't know by how much. Last year's base rate hike was to pay for staffing, technology improvements, and infrastructure. CPS's chief financial officer says all those reasons could also explain next year's planned increase. 516, 71 degrees. Twitter cracking down on violent speech, how it plans to address when people threaten harm or violence towards others. And checking Trans Guide. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazos. Get an update on your early morning commute on this Wednesday, March 1st. We'll be back. You know why people are always looking at their phones? They're banking with Bank of America. See Cousin Jimmy over there? His girlfriend just caught the bouquet. So he might need a little more help saving for that engagement ring. The groom's parents? You think they're looking at photos of their handsome boy. They're not. She just saw how much they spent on ballroom dance classes. Won't be needing those anymore. Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop banking. What would you like the power to do? I'm feeling better. Body pain? Headache? Nope. All one and done. C congestion? Better. Cough? Fever? Better. Mucinex All-in-One relieves nine symptoms in one dose. It's not cold and flu season. Ah! It's always comeback season. Unless you treat dandruff regularly, it will keep coming back. Try Head & Shoulders. It contains zinc pyrithione, which fights the germ that causes dandruff, and when used regularly, helps prevent it from coming back. For up to 100% dandruff protection, use Head & Shoulders. 
Hi, good morning. Welcome back. It is 519. And Stephen joins us here at the desk. Good morning. Yeah, good morning to you guys. Uh, you all remember that big backup we had along 410 yesterday? Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so we still have crews out there. They're working um, on some uh, bridge and our part of me, barrier and striping work, but it's not going to be that bad today. And I'll tell you why. Let's get a look Hopefully at Trans Guy. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Not. Fingers crossed, but yeah. I don't think it's going to be that bad because we only have two lanes <laughs> blocked off at this time. Actually, now it looks like it's just down to one. Uh, we showed you this shot as you went to commercial break at, uh, just before the 5 a.m. newscast and you can see that crews are still out there. Uh, that work is expected to uh, should be wrapping up hopefully pretty soon. But um, again, the reason why it's not that bad is because we're not seeing multiple lanes that are blocked off in this direction near 410 at Starcrest, but crews are still out there in the distance. I did speak to our friends at Transguide a little bit earlier this morning, so hopefully we'll see this wrapping up pretty soon, but just be aware. Uh, again, the main headline on the roadways, at least for right now, is going to be that construction that you see kind of scattered around our map there. And and to get back to that point of 410, let's just talk about what we're going to see at least up until Saturday because that striping and barrier work is expected to take place overnight. Now, the tentative time that should wrap up is 5 in the morning, but as we saw yesterday, it took a little while. That's why we saw multiple left lane closures along Loop 410 and those eastbound main lanes. Now, that's actually from Nacogdoches Road to Harry Rohrsbach Road. I know that's a lot of information, but you can always head over to ksat.com slash traffic for a full list of closures there. But again, expect that work to take us all the way up until Saturday, March fourth but Mike as uh, we mentioned hopefully we won't see big delays like we saw yesterday yeah fingers crossed on that one now you want to watch out also for a couple of damp spots on the road I'm going to show you that in a second first of all yeah you know, we finally got rid of the clouds yesterday and it was a beautiful beautiful sunset great picture thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC connect shot there over there by the airport uh, you can see I uh, see all the the lights off in the distance so we don't have any thick fog anything it looks like it just looks a little bit like 410, maybe dampish. I can't tell if that's just the reflection off the pavement right there because we have had a couple of little sprinkles around the area. Uh, Mark earlier said he saw just some mist coming into work and there's not much out there being picked up on radar as of right now. Just a few little spots here and there. As you can see, some of these that are sliding right in toward downtown. This is a lot of clutter around the, the radar site, but just those couple little uh, spots right there. And then heading down to the uh, southwest, right along 35 just these few little sprinkles here and down or showers if you will and that's the extent of it. it's not going to be anything other than just kind of making the roads damp in spots so watch that and again we've got a little bit of fog not much thickest is there or the, the lowest of visibility is out there in Kerrville Rock Springs as well. It's all it's scattered all about the area, so not just confined to one spot, but we'll just be on the lookout obviously as the the morning rolls on for that fog to thicken up in places. Temperatures are at what the normal high is right now. We at the airport are at, in the low 70s. We're going to stay pretty steady this morning. A couple little sprinkles here and there. Some sunshine by late this morning, low 80s already by noon, and then we are going to be topping off about 20 degrees above normal hitting 90 today with more sunshine and plenty of humidity with these dew point temperatures well up in the 60s. That's going to remain the case throughout the evening hours and then also into tomorrow morning. So we'll have more mist, drizzle, a little fog. Then tomorrow, notice how by dinner time, early evening, the front comes through here, drier air comes in, winds start to howl, and that drier air will continue to move on into the area as the day progresses. And then as that front moves on through here, we are going to get a couple of showers as well as a few thunderstorms, and that's going to be late tomorrow, late afternoon into the evening hours. And some of those could be on the stronger side. Most of that would be further off to the east. Now we do have the an isolated strong to severe storm is going to be possible. Actually, Storm Prediction Center move this a little further to the west to include a good chunk of the hill country. The highest risk is going to be further off to the east. And of course, we've got the fire weather watch, which was expanded to include Bear County and some of our counties counties down to the uh, southeast. That's going to be then tomorrow from noon up until 3 o'clock in the morning on Friday. Winds are going to be gusting 45, 50 miles per hour, even stronger than that at times. And that bone dry air coming in. And of course, we haven't had rain in forever, it seems like. 83 at noon, mostly cloudy skies. Then we'll see more sunshine later on today. 90, very humid. Tomorrow, we start off the same way. Mist, drizzle, a little bit of patchy fog here. Very warm and humid, stays humid throughout most of the day. The front starts to move on through here couple of showers and thunderstorms late in the day in the hill country and then moving on through and some of those could be stronger, especially off to the east. We'll be on the lookout for that, although odds of rain are not that great. Then 
windy conditions in behind that fire weather watch windy in through the early Friday. Beautiful after that, though. Great looking in through Saturday. Humidity starts to return later Sunday. Nice weekend's the payoff. Yeah, yeah, it's, it is going to be a very nice weekend. Too bad we're not getting more rain out of it, but we got to watch out for some of those thunderstorms and and again the high fire danger. We'll watch out for it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. A lot going on over the next couple of days, folks. 524, 71 degrees on your Wednesday. Up next, Google is rolling out its fall detection feature on some of its devices. We're going to tell you how it works. Tech Bytes, a cybersecurity breach at Dish Network. The satellite provider says a breach knocked out its websites, call centers, and internal communications last week. Dish says it's still determining if customers' personal information was compromised. Next, Twitter's crackdown on violent speech. The company's new policy prohibits violent threats and incitement of violence. Accounts violating the policy will be suspended. Less severe violations will require users to delete content before accessing their account again. Google just rolled out a new safety feature to its Pixel Watch, similar to what's on the Apple Watch. It will call for help after sensing a hard fall. Once the fall detection kicks in, the watch will first ask if the owner needs help and then call 911 and share the location if the user doesn't respond. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. Time now, 528 and 71 degrees for now. Lawmakers in Washington are getting more worried about the ongoing threat from China just ahead. What Secretary of State Antony Blinken is saying about the situation this morning. An important recall for Nissan customers. We're going to tell you which of its models may have a problem of randomly turning off while driving. Making headlines this morning, Republican and Democratic lawmakers in the U.S. House say the threat China poses to the United States needs to be addressed now. Just ahead, what a former national security advisor is saying about this tense situation. Let's look out there with live cam, a humid 71 degrees and calm, if you will, compared to the changes we will see tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Wednesday, March 1st. We'll talk to Stephen in just a moment. Yeah, happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Okay, a lot of wind tomorrow. We just got a brace for that. Yeah, tomorrow in the afternoon. Tomorrow's going to be an interesting day because not only do we have the wind talking about the high fire danger and the wind, but then also now it's good that we're going to get a little bit of rain, but there's going to be a small severe threat as well. So late in the afternoon today, it is just as you know, we were talking about warm and humid. I don't even know if this qualifies as warm. It's just hot and humid out there. It's almost like a late July, mid to late July morning as far as temperatures are concerned. We're closer to what the uh, normal. We're actually above what the normal high is right now. 72 degrees. Normal high is 70. 67 is a dew point. That number. Yeah, it gets up in the 60s. Yeah, and you definitely feel it. Southerly wind at eight miles per hour just continues to pull in all this moisture. And so what that's doing is creating just a little bit in the way of some some light rain. I mean, we've had a few little sprinkly showers here and there. It's almost hard to kind of see some of this that's not moving. Obviously, is some of the ground clutter, but you see some of these little sprinkles that have moved on through the area. And there are a couple of more down to the uh, south and west, just scattered about near, say, Lackland down 30 uh, down 35 on the uh, southwest side of town and even a couple more further on down to the south but those have all pretty much now fizzled on out maybe one or two of them over there toward floorsville again this is not really anything uh of any consequence, just that light little light little sprinkles, um, some mist out there as well. So the roads may be damp, a little bit of fog, a little bit of reduced visibility, not bad, but it is spread around the entire area this morning. Just keep a lookout in case you find a you know one spot where it may be a little bit thicker. Bunch of allergens out there. Update account comes out in a couple of hours, but yeah, we are definitely into spring. Actually, the first day of meteorological spring, March, April and May. We are going to be up to 83 at noon. Still lots of clouds hanging around here. More sunshine today. Very hot and humid. Tomorrow we're going to start off pretty much identical. Very warm and humid. Mist, drizzle, fog. But it's the afternoon where things are going to start to change. And we're going to have to be on the lookout. Details on that. Look ahead to the first weekend of March in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. So still got that problem on 410, that slowdown? Yeah, well, we still have uh, slowdowns out there, Mike. And it, right now they appear to be minor. But remember, that is construction that is taking place. And hopefully those crews will be wrapping up pretty soon. But right now, let's get a quick look there at 410 at Perrin Vital. Not a bad shot at all, actually, as we get the Wednesday commute rolling. Tenant for you. 
another nice shot from Transguide. 30 minutes ago, we saw pretty much the same thing, and really the map is showing us a lot of green out there. However, you see a little bit of a stretch of red, and we're going to take you in. That's along I-35 right here as you approach Thousand Oaks. Now, traffic is moving, but uh, really slow at this hour, just about 14 miles per hour. Now, remember, 35 is uh, an area where we see a lot of construction due to the Northeast Expansion Project, and that's likely what's taking place here. There are no issues being reported in that area other than construction. So just remember, if you're traveling up maybe toward Live Oak, you will see a little bit of a slowdown and expect to probably drive around 14 miles per hour in that area. We'll watch it closely, but if you plan on traveling into San Antonio, the issues aren't really uh, very large at this point. 37 northbound, if you are traveling in that early from Pleasanton, 27 minutes to the Alamo City, and it's about half an hour along Highway 90 if you're traveling eastbound from Casterville, and that arrival from Lytle should be within about 16 minutes. So all in all, things look pretty normal right now, but we're going to watch the roads closely. 35 at Alamo. You can see the commute in those upper levels picking up just a bit. Again, we'll have an update on some of those road closures coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. Stephen, thank you. Updating late breaking news. San Antonio police say things got especially unfriendly during a middle of the night gathering. Two men ended up with gunshot wounds that are now threatening their lives. Katrina Weber is live where it all happened on North San Ignacio near West Commerce. And Katrina, have they been able to find the shooter? No, police are still looking for that person who they say took off from here in either a tan or brown SUV. We still have crime scene investigators here and detectives who are going door to door trying to find out what neighbors might know. But let me give you a look at the video because it's pretty dark out here. This call came out just before four o'clock this morning. Police say they found out that there were four men who were standing outside a vacant house uh, having some sort of a gathering. At one point, it's turned into an argument with one man pulling out a gun and then shooting and hitting two of the others in that group. Those two men were taken to a hospital. Police say they were in pretty bad shape, in critical condition, and their investigation has been going on since that time here in this neighborhood. But again, they say that that shooter did get away. They have an active search on for that person. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Lawmakers in Washington believe the U.S. needs to keep a closer watch on China. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, last night a House Select Committee featuring members of both parties stressed the hazards China could potentially try to impose. The Select Committee will come to order. In a rare show of bipartisanship, the House Select Committee on China says it's focused on Beijing and the potential dangers it can bring upon the U.S. We recognize that we don't have to agree on everything, but when it comes to the threat we face from the Chinese Communist Party, I think we see it clearly and we want to identify that bipartisan center of gravity where we can push back against transnational repression from the CCP. Several high profile witnesses testified Tuesday, including former National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster. This committee's work is urgent and important because the United States has fallen behind in the consequential competition with the Chinese Communist Party. Separate from the hearing, lawmakers have another concern, China's relationship with Russia. Xi Jinping has met Putin 30 times in the last 10 years, uh, more than any other foreign leader. He said Putin is his best friend. U.S. officials have given China fair warning, saying there will be consequences if it aids Russia's invasion of Ukraine. We will not hesitate, for example, to target Chinese companies or individuals that violate uh, our sanctions uh, or otherwise engage in supporting the Russian war effort. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Kobe Bryant's widow Vanessa has reached a nearly $30 million settlement with Los Angeles County. She says she filed the legal action to protect her husband's legacy as well as that of her daughter Gianna, who also died in the helicopter crash along with seven others. The settlement ends a long legal battle over graphic photos shared by sheriff's deputies following Kobe Bryant's fatal helicopter crash. With this new settlement, the L.A. County Board of Supervisors say all pending and future claims are now considered resolved. Near Houston, the Crosby Independent School District Board of Trustees has approved moving to a four-day instructional week starting next school year. Now, that makes it the largest district in Texas so far to make the decision to move to four days and the first in Harris County. When the 2023-2024 school year begins, Fridays will be considered 
student holidays. Teachers and staff will work one Friday each month for staff development. An additional 20 to 25 minutes will be added to the school days to make up for the three day weekend. The district superintendent said she hopes the move to a four day school week will attract more teachers to the district. The United States Postal Service says it is revving up plans to modernize the nation's largest federal fleet of vehicles. USPS has now awarded new contracts to Ford to buy more than 9,200 commercial electric vehicles. Postal Service says the vehicles will be the first stage of a, an initiative to eventually replace all gas-powered vehicles with electric. USPS has allotted more than $9.5 billion to upgrade its fleet. The money will also be used to purchase 14,000 new EV charging stations. Time now, 540 and 71 degrees for now. Nissan is issuing a big recall for some of its rogue SUVs because they could just randomly shut off while driving. Up next, we'll talk about the models that are affected. And if you love your movie theater popcorn, we're going to tell you about AMC Theater's new partnership with Walmart and when you can bring the theater experience home. Outside with Live Camp, first day of March. Thanks for starting your day and month with us here on Good Morning San Antonio. We'll be back. Welcome back, 543 in your morning consumer headlines. Nissan Rogue drivers need to be aware of an important factory recall just announced. The car maker recalling more than 712,000 vehicles. The reason? They can shut off while driving. The recalls for Rogues made between 2016 through 2020 and Rogue Sports made between 2017 through 2022. In the design, an internal joint in the key that can weaken over time may allow the key to accidentally fold while in use. If it's bumped while in the ignition, the vehicle can accidentally turn off. Scary if you happen to be on the road at the time. Nissan advises drivers to avoid attaching anything to the ignition key that might weigh it down. The car maker also says drivers should insert the key into the ignition in a direction that allows it to fold only upward. The company says it will begin alerting individual owners about the recall later this month. And if you're like me and you love movie theater popcorn, we're told that we are going to love this. AMC Theaters is coming out with a new line of microwave and ready to eat popcorn. AMC Perfectly Popcorn will be available at some Walmart locations in March. In April, it will be on the shelves of more than 2,600 Walmart locations and on walmart.com. A six count pa package of the microwave varieties is expected to sell for about $5. Ready to eat popcorn is expected to retail for about $4 for a four to five ounce bag. Probably all cheaper than we would get at the theater anyway, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm willing to try it, but I, it's just I nothing don't know, like, to, nothing like a, going to the theater and getting popcorn. Even if you're not seeing a movie. Right, right. Yeah, just go in there, get your snack and go home. There you go, 544, 71 degrees. And are you ready for a new friend? Well, the Animal Defense League is standing by with a very special pet. What Next. a precious pup. I know, so cute. A lot of traffic coming at you in that last shot. And there's our slowdown right now. A lot of brake lights, 35 and Weedner. We'll circle back and talk to Steven coming up. If you want energy, this is the guy. Oh, well, okay, here, you're gonna stand up? This is, uh, who is this? This is I'll Oliver. You this, <laughs> yes. this is Nadia, and? <laughs> this is Oliver, he's about a year old, and as you can see, full of energy and looking for the perfect family that's just gonna take him out around town. And has the greatest, I don't know if you can get a close up of his face. He is just, I mean, a great dog face. That is just a classic face. He is going, oh my goodness gracious. Now, the thing is, okay, ready, sit, go. <laughs> Or give me in the mouth. <laughs> He's so excited. He did it off camera. So. Sit, sit. Can you sit? Sit. Can you sit? You can sit. No. Okay. You know what? He's excited. <laughs> I knew I was going to get a mouthful of dog tongue. He's really excited. All right. Other than Oliver and the excitement, what's going on? We have so much going on uh, this month of March. So we have our free vaccination clinics happening on Saturday. We have our March Muttness, which is a fundraising event for the entire month of March. And then we are also needing um, some stuff from our Amazon wish list, which mm -hmm. is because of kitten season, we are needing... Um, kitten <laughs> meal replacement formula and <laughs> bottles. But, so yeah, a lot going on this month of March. <laughs>
Oh, don't be laugh. I know you're such a happy boy. <laughs> it's going to happen to me. I shouldn't laugh. If you'd like more information about this guy, he is just a, I mean, yeah, bundle of energy. <laughs> 1100 and Paul Jolly Center, Pet Smart, or adltexas.org. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Thank you, Oliver. Yes. Oh, he's all puppy. I know. Oliver has so much energy. Big puppy. Dog. Uh, and pure Very love there, too. I'm glad you're okay, Mike. He's over here. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Got a, got a mouthful of Oliver there. Yes. 549, 71 degrees. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah. You know what, though? He probably gives really good cuddles, too. Aww, so, um, yeah. all right. Hopefully he finds his forever home. But right now, it looks like it may take a little while for this to clear up here. 35 at Weedner. Now, uh, earlier we told you about a slowdown that was taking place along 35. And remember, that is likely due to the Northeast Expansion Project. We still have crews that are out there working to improve our roadways, but it's taking a little bit of time this morning, guys. And unfortunately, Unfortunately, it's not looking good for drivers that are already traveling along that route. But let's talk about what we are seeing here because that slowdown is taking place in the, the northbound lanes of 35, and that's where we see that buildup traffic moving at just a little bit further up here better at 69 miles per hour. But earlier, it was about 14 miles per hour. So uh, slowdown is pretty much stayed consistent throughout the morning. Hopefully, we'll see some improvement. But just so you know, that work is going to continue all the way up until Saturday. So striping and barrier work is what's happening out there. And and it is overnight, but again, it's taking crews a little while to wrap this up. Should have been finished at five in the morning. We are seeing multiple left lane closures along the I-35 northbound main lanes from O'Connor Road to Judson Road. So watch out if you have to travel to Live Oak a little bit later this morning because crews are still out there. Hopefully we'll see a better update soon. But right now back on Transguide, um, this is not something everyone wants to see, but we'll be optimistic about it. And hopefully this will wrap up by morning rush. Sure Oliver's not so. one, a dog that's somebody looking for a couch potato necessarily. No. No. A lot of puppy, a lot of energy to burn up, but smart dog. I mean, and, and he was, before we started taping yesterday, Aww. sitting, you know, yeah. he would sit and all that. So a little bit of work and, you know, a lot of energy, tennis ball in the backyard. And Adorable. For about, you know, your arm is going to be falling off and throwing the <laughs> yeah. tennis ball in the backyard. With <laughs> have that to get dog. one of those automatic ball throwers on yeah. Amazon, yeah. right? Or just take him running. Yeah, running. I was going to say there running partner, yeah. walking partner. Great little dog Aww. and a classic little face on him. So hopefully somebody adopts him soon. All right, take a look outside. This was the uh, sunset yesterday over there at Woodlawn Lake. Mr. McClellan and a couple of ducks taking flight. Beautiful shot there. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, it was a beautiful sunset. Uh, we got a lot of clouds hanging around here this morning, and it is kind of fuzzy looking out there as far as a bunch of humidity. Now, as far as rain, we had a few of those showers earlier down there to the south. Still a couple of them well to the south, and a few of them that were trying to slide in through town. Even the ones around Floresville and Poth uh, seem to have kind of fizzled on out. Same thing as far as the ones in and around town right now. There have been a couple of them that moved on through through here. A lot of this is just some leftover clutter. There's probably some mist and drizzle out there. Rain's not going to be any sort of a any sort of a, a big deal this morning at all. A little bit of reduced visibility here and there. Rock Springs is down to three miles now Four at Kerrville and temperatures. We are above what the normal high is right now. 25 degrees above where we should be for the low temperature and a ton of humidity out there. As a matter of fact, comparing to yesterday, dew points have gone up. 50 degrees in Rock Springs. That's how much how dry it was yesterday, how much more humid it is. And then that's going to be just the opposite once that front moves through here tomorrow. 23 degrees higher than what it was at this time yesterday. So the forecast throughout the rest of today, pretty much steady temperatures all morning long. 10% little mist, uh, you know, mist drizzle out there. Some sunshine later on today. Then we make it up to 90. So we are going to have a very hot, humid day. It was mid 80s yesterday, even hotter today. Humidity. Now, here's where the front comes through tomorrow night. And like I said, those dew points will be dropping a good 40, 50 degrees in the hill country as that uh, front moves on through. That's going to be tomorrow night overnight. Also, as the front moves on through here, it is going to start to touch off. This is tomorrow late afternoon, some of those showers and thunderstorms. Most of those, anything that really starts to get going is going to be further off to the east, and there could be some uh, high winds and even uh, some hail. Isolated tornado can't be ruled out off there to the east. Again, there's that severe threat and isolated um, severe storm in portions of the hill country. Most of those off to the east, and of course, the fire weather watch that goes into effect tomorrow at noon up until 3 o'clock Friday morning 
pretty much the western half of our area or southwestern half of our area, including Bear County is included now 83 degrees, mostly cloudy skies at noon today. High temperature makes it up to 90, partly cloudy, very hot and humid out there. It's going to be a, a summer kind of a day. Same thing tomorrow. Front moves through then late in the day tomorrow. We'll have a few showers, thunderstorms out there. We'll have to watch out for those windy, windy conditions overnight into Friday. High fire danger and then beautiful after that. Thank you, Mike. 554, 70 degrees. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, three, four, six, fireball four, daily four, seven, four, five, six, fireball six. Cash five, three, five, nine, 28, 34, and mega. 14, 16, 40, 52, 59, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier 2. Coming up here on GMA, I've got my storm gear on in Southern California. Santa Monica Pier behind me just drenched. We've got flood advisories, all the latest pictures from the Sierra, insane amounts of snow again. Uh, this is where, where real winter has been, but a real spring-like pattern for severe storms is setting up in the south. So Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, parts of Texas, got to look out today, tomorrow, and then we'll move it into Georgia and beyond for the end of the week. I'll track that. And then we've got a story about, you know, your favorite coffee spot or restaurant, how they give you those rewards cards. Well, apparently they will be becoming less generous and there's a reason behind it. We'll tell you that reason. And we'll also give you some tips on what to do next. And finally, zero waste in your home. It's almost impossible to get to that point, but it would be great if all of us could. So I'm going to bring you into our home and give you some of the tips and things that maybe you haven't yet heard about. Hopefully we'll save you some money and certainly going to change your ways without making you have to sacrifice. That and so much more right here on GMA. Coming up next hour, we continue to follow that fire at a near Northside apartment complex last night. Many residents had to be rescued. We'll have an update coming up. And Stephen is tracking traffic on this Wednesday, March 1st.